Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Jimenez, uh, for your hospitality and your kind words and uh, the introduction. Uh, the mayor uh, mentioned uh, about three visits ago to Miami was a quite humiliating visit for me. The Spurs had lost to the Heat, and I had to show up in Miami wearing a LeBron James jersey <laughs> and do community service at an elementary school, which of course wasn't bad, uh, but also got to help serve some Tex-Mex to veterans at uh, the Fisher House. Uh, and so fortunately, the Spurs went on to win the next year, and uh, we enjoyed some good seafood in San Antonio. So thank you, Mayor Jimenez, for that. Uh, hello, Miami. It is great to be here with you. Uh, I also want to take a minute to thank Javier Gonzalez, Manny Medina, and everyone who has helped to organize this incredible conference. Uh, I'm sure that there aren't many events that feature both Pitbull and Deepak Chopra, <laughs> let alone tons of tech leaders from across the Americas. And uh, you know, I look out at all of you here, and I see more than just entrepreneurs and innovators. I see the future. So this is truly a special gathering, and I'm very honored to be a part of it. Thank you for the invitation. However, I must say that uh, as the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, as we meet here today, we also can't ignore the unrest and frustration that's rising up outside these doors in communities across the United States, from Baltimore to Ferguson to New York and beyond, we're seeing folks standing up and speaking out hungry for fairness and crying out for opportunity. What we're seeing is about much more than just policing. It's also about decades of disinvestment that have denied these communities access to decent housing, good jobs, and quality schools for generations. It's about the pain of poverty and the hurt of unfulfilled hopes. It's about our fellow Americans who look at their own future and see obstacles rather than opportunities because they believe that the deck is stacked against them. Now, I think all of us would agree that uh, there isn't a single solution to these complex challenges. But I do know one thing, and it's why I'm here. It's that the work that y'all do is and must be part of the answer to that challenge. I don't have to tell you that technology represents opportunity in people's lives. It has the power to enhance how we work, how we learn, and how we live. It allows a small business in Baltimore to sell to a customer in Brazil with the click of a mouse. It can give a young child in Ferguson access to unlimited knowledge with the swipe of a screen. It allows folks in Miami or Argentina or California to connect and advance common interests for the common good. And as HUD Secretary, I'm not here to tell you what's next for technology because you know that a lot better than I do. I'm here to ask for your help in ensuring that every person has the chance to access technology and to thrive in our 21st century global economy. The good news is that this region, the region, the city that many of you call home, this beautiful place of Miami, has shown that this work is possible. Over a 10-year period, as trade between the United States and the Americas grew nearly threefold, more than 70 million people in Latin America were able to escape poverty. In the United States alone, we've seen a record 61 straight months of private sector job growth, resulting in 12.1 million new jobs and in higher wages. This means more entrepreneurs are able to turn their ideas into startups, more skilled workers are able to support your businesses, and more consumers are available for your products. Our challenge now is to ensure that everyone can participate 
in this growth if they're willing to work hard. Everyone in this room has a stake in making that happen. Our world is more interconnected than it ever has been before. The story of this 21st century is that the old barriers that have divided us of nationality, of religion, of race, are crumbling at a faster rate than at any other time in human history. And it's also clear that our economies are linked and that our futures are shared. So we've got to work together to prosper together. And I assure you that the Obama administration is committed to making this an era of expanding digital opportunity. And this work is being built on three pillars. The first is increasing access to training and digital skills so that more Americans can secure well-paying jobs. Right now in the United States, there are five million job openings. Think about that for a second. Five million job openings in the United States, and half a million of those are in technology and pay, on average, 50% higher than other jobs. And as the President has said, many of these jobs with titles like mobile app developer and user interface designer didn't exist just a decade ago. We need to fill these jobs for the sake of our national economy, but talented individuals who don't have four-year degrees have historically been shut out of these opportunities. And that's why the President is working to change this with an initiative called Tech Hire. It brings together employers, community colleges, and other partners to rapidly train and hire workers for good paying jobs in the tech industry, often in just a few months. More than 20 communities are part of Tech Hire so far, and the list of those communities is growing. The effort is designed to help folks like Husani Burton from San Francisco. Husani grew up without a computer and in a community with limited tech exposure. He told a local news station that Tech Hire, quote, gives people like us a chance to see the technology, a chance to use it, and a chance to learn how to be a part of the field one day. In other words, Tech Hire represents that opportunity. And it's going to benefit families, businesses, and your industry for generations to come. The second pillar of digital opportunity is giving folks of all backgrounds their own access to technology. In this day and age, broadband access is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. For the young person who has to do their homework, to the working age individual who wants to fill out a job application that will only be accepted online. But here in the United States, the Census Bureau estimates that one out of every four American households lacks high-speed internet at home. And so often, they're forced to try to find access somewhere, somehow. Take the Bronx, for example. I read that when the Bronx Library Center opens up every morning, dozens of people are already lined up to use one of the free computers. When it closes, young people lean against the windows from the outside because they're trying to get the free Wi-Fi signal on their phones. Consider that for a second. They're literally and figuratively on the outside looking in. These young Americans are not on a level playing field because they're not connected. They're at disadvantage when studying for a test or preparing for a school project. They're limited when they're looking for jobs and applying for them. Folks are being denied the world of possibilities that so many of us in this day and age take for granted. And all of us have got to do something about it. The President has challenged the nation to connect 99% of America's students to broadband and wireless in their schools and libraries by 2018. As HUD Secretary, I've made it a goal to ensure that this access actually follows them home. 
I look forward to working with leaders like you to make this goal a reality. Together, we can shape a future where nobody is left behind and every person has a chance to get ahead. The last pillar of our digital opportunity push is using technology to transform the way the public sector does business. It's no secret that in the past, government, government has been too slow to change with the times. It's often felt like government is using a dial-up approach when the rest of the world is operating at much faster speeds. That's why the president has been determined to bring the federal government into modern times. He launched the US Digital Service, a new department that's comprised of top talent from the tech world that includes the lead developer on Google Chrome, the third engineer ever hired at Amazon, and other problem solvers, doers, and makers. They strive every single day simply to make government better so that all of us can benefit, so veterans can get their benefits faster, so that older Americans can manage their Social Security funds better, so that students can easily identify the most affordable loan repayment plans and so much more than that. These individuals have said that mastering technology is one of the greatest challenges facing our government. And our generation is answering the call. And I ask you to consider answering this call with them. The digital service is always looking for new talent, for fresh ideas, and new perspectives. You have the power to make the US government better and I encourage you to seize that opportunity. There's nothing more rewarding than public service. Technology and government is about a lot more than coding and programming. It's about making a difference and bettering people's lives. I know this from firsthand experience at HUD. For example, our department is one of the leads in the president's effort to end homelessness as we know it. And we recognize that to fully tackle that challenge, we need to see it and understand it first. So we're using data more than ever before to ensure that our resources are getting, the, getting to those who need it the most, building on the things that we know are working and making adjustments to those that aren't. We've also created a mobile app to help our local partners fully capture the needs that they're seeing on the ground so that we can enhance our efforts even further and become more effective. The result of all of this work is a 21% drop in chronic homelessness and a 33% drop in homelessness among veterans between 2010 and 2014. And we continue to look for new ways to incorporate technology into our work to provide those we serve with the help and the hope that they need for the future. And again, I'm here to ask for your help for your ideas. All of you in this room are on the front lines of change and of progress. You keep the United States and this region of the world focused on thinking bigger, on moving forward, on being competitive in this 21st century global economy, and on crafting new solutions to old problems. And one of the core questions that we must answer at this moment in history is how do we shape a future in a tech revolution that welcomes everyone? I outlined core components of that by increasing access to technology in homes and communities, equipping folks with 21st century skills, and building a modern government that works better. But the other key component to all of that is you. You know how to dream and discover and I ask you to use your imagination to make an impact on the ground so that others can dream and discover as well. This is an age that we live in of possibility. And the history books are written of the late 20th century and the first part of this 21st. I'm betting that they'll be written in breathtaking terms about the way that knowledge was applied to advance economic and human interests 
to improve quality of life, and to reset the economic dynamic across the world. We must continue to set our sights high to achieve lasting progress economically and socially. Only then can we ensure that the new frontiers of technology will help usher in a new chapter of inclusive growth here in Florida, in Baltimore, in Ferguson, across the United States, throughout the Americas, and in an increasingly interconnected world. And I look forward to working with all of you to build a future where digital opportunity reaches all, that it reaches the hopes and the dreams of young Americans throughout our nation and makes those hopes and those dreams more real. Thank you very much. Thank you.